So for laser cooling, obviously, what you need is a laser, or actually several lasers, but not so many. So this is one of them. This is a commercial device. It produces about a watt of laser light in this uh, nice red color that you see everywhere. And this is another one. This is a home-built diode laser um, that we assembled here. And uh, th these two sources together produce all the light that you see on this table. And um, then there's this um, little oven here. What we do here, we have a little sample of, of a piece of lithium metal inside this uh, tin foil. And we heat it up to some 300 degrees Celsius or so. And then we just shine some of the light through this uh, little tube here. And um, because the lithium is so hot, it actually becomes liquid and then even gaseous. And then we, we uh, illuminate it with this light. We can measure this spectroscopy and then adjust all this uh, laser light to the, exactly the right color that we need for the laser cooling. So basically, it is actually quite simple overall, I would say. If you imagine that we can use this light to cool atoms to absolute zero temperature, essentially, and all we have here is a square meter of some basically Lego-like parts that we can assemble in ways that, that we, we want, but it's, it's uh, uh, basically an arrangement of, of mostly mirrors. So you see all these little mirrors here that, that are only used to steer the beam along different paths. Sometimes we need to split up a beam into several different paths. Then we have these little cubes here. They're just beam splitters, or if you want, half-silvered mirrors where a part of the beam goes through and another part gets reflected. And then it's all it is is a geometrical assembly of steering beams in different ways. And then we have only a few active components. Um, for example, these things, they, they're optical isolators. They let the light through in, in one direction, but not in the other. Or we have um, a few lenses that here, for example, you have a cylindrically shaped lens that, that would focus the beam in one direction, but not into the other. And then, uh, for example, here it passes through what is called an acousto-optical modulator. This table is really big and solid. Look, it looks like a big like a giant snooker table. Tell me a little bit about this table. So it is basically, it's heavy. So you, you want to avoid vibrations of your components because um, with this level of stabilization of the laser light, you actually can't afford mechanical vibrations that you always have in a building like this. Or for example, with us talking, you would probably see it already um, if this wasn't isolated uh, vibrationally. and. Um, the way it's done is basically by making this table very heavy. It has the weight of a car, roughly. So half a ton or a ton. And um, also what you can do, and we sometimes do, but not always, is we can, we can pump this table up with uh, pressurized air so it's actually floating. So it's floating and completely disconnected from the, from the vibrations of the building. Then. OK, so once we've prepared all this light in the way we want, we actually have these two, these three components here which are um, in-coupling devices to put the light from these mirrors into optical fibers. And those fibers you see here, these blue things. And they actually transport the light all the way over to this other table so that we can treat our laser system and our laser cooling separately. And if we work on one, we don't affect the other and so on. And we have some, some vacuum pumps. Here is one. Um, uh, there's another one, and they, they actually uh, provide us with a vacuum that is quite good. It has um, about 10 to the minus 10 millibar, which is 13 orders of magnitude less than the air in this room. So the number of, of air molecules inside there is really very, really very small as compared to the air in this room. Um, but we also, of course, we need, if we want to cool lithium, we need a source of lithium. And this is actually here. Here you see a little, again, a little oven of lithium. So we, heat, we have, again, a piece of metal inside. And then we heat it up. And then it, it goes through all this, this little tube and the, um, this arrangement of magnetic fields that helps us to, to crudely s slow down these atoms that come out of this oven at a very high speed, approximately. Um, well, 
several hundred meters per second speed. It comes out of here, and this, this magnetic field arrangement, it's called the Siemens lower, helps us to slow these atoms to, to already a low speed when they, so that they are quite slow when they enter this uh, main part of the experiment, this vacuum chamber. And then once they're here, we shine laser beams that come from the other table through these fibers, here these fiber ends, so out of the, the light comes out of these fibers in, in, in these uh, locations here. And uh, there will be one from the bottom also here. So we have this direction, this direction, and then from the bottom. So we have three orthogonal directions from which the light comes, here, here, and here. And then we have mirrors that simply retroreflect the, the light beams into themselves. So basically we have pairs of beams, for example the one from the bottom gets reflected by this mirror from the top and then they, the light beams meet and they, we have to adjust these things and that's what these little screws are for. We can fine tune these laser beams to exactly meet each other in the middle of this uh, vacuum chamber. And um, maybe you can look inside a little bit, you see how these, these beams somehow cross and at that point we will be able to um, laser cool the lithium atoms to almost zero temperature. Probably the temperatures that we can make here are not only the lowest that we can make in labs, but probably they're actually the lowest um, in the world at all. How cold is an ultra cold atom? So you know that the absolute zero temperature is minus 273 degrees Celsius, um, zero degree Kelvin, and here we're really 0 0.000 and then you have six, seven, eight, sometimes even nine zeros, and then you have a whatever other number, one uh, degrees above zero. So really a billionth of a degree is possible to achieve. Is it possible to get to absolute zero? To absolute, absolute zero we will never get. There's a law in thermodynamics, that, that uh, fundamental law that, that says that this is not possible, but we can get arbitrarily close.